Every other advert, are you a learner? <laughs> so, are you a learner? Sorry, who, what, what's wrong with you? Hmm. Are you not aware? Jesus of Nazareth, he said, a prophet of God. That's what they called him. His, prophet, his disciples called him prophet. The glory cloud is here. The power of our God. Jesus has done everything. So if he has done everything, I just need to find out. Because the blood opened the way, not just for me to come before God, the blood opens the way for God to come into me. Watching the Living Word Telecast. Don't forget, when it shall turn to the Lord, the veil shall be taken away. Then you will see clearly all the drama of the Old Testament, all the ceremonies. Let's go on a bit now. After that, you discover that Peter, you know, it takes a while. 40 days teaching cannot solve many years' problem. Jesus was with them 40 days doing teaching, series, daily teaching, tutorials of the word. After all Jesus told them, let's observe Peter's sermon. In Acts 2, praise God. Please stay, pay attention here. What happened to Jesus? The four Gospels tell us about Judas, and then tell us about Pilate, and then uh, the betrayal of Judas, and the denial of, um, of Peter, and all that. Now look at Acts 2, verse 22. Ye men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God, among you by wonders, signs, I mean, miracles and wonders and signs, which God did by him in the midst of you, and you yourselves you know. Him being delivered by the predetermined counsel of God and foreknowledge of God, you have taken, watch that, and by what? Wicked hands have crucified and slain. That was his son. He says, you, talking to the Jews, you delivered him over, you crucified him, you slew him. That was his son. Go to chapter 3. I'm going to read some verses of, portions of scripture here. Verse 13. And the God of Abraham, another Simon now. The God of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, the God of our fathers, had glorified his son Jesus, whom you delivered up. And de notice it. Whom you did what? Acts 3.13. Whom you did what? What is it to deliver up? Deliver up means to give to die. Okay? Whom you gave to die and denied him in the presence of Pilate, when he was determined to let him go. But you deny the Holy One and the just and desire the murderer to be granted unto you and kill the prince of life whom God had raised from the dead whereof were witnesses. So here, here this. What's this? Peter's sermon is this. Man punished Jesus. And then God raised him from the dead. That's, that's what he was preaching. Now in chapter 4. Again, verse 10. Be known unto you and to all the people of Israel, and by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him does this man stand here before you whom? Whom you crucified. Acts 5, verse 30. Acts 5. The God of our fathers raised up Jesus, Acts 5, 30, whom you slew and hung on a tree. Acts 7, 52. 
Which of the prophets have not your fathers persecuted? And they are slaying them. Which showed before of the coming of the just one. Of whom you have, not, you have been now the betrayers and murderers. So we have read how many psalms? Acts 2, Acts 3, Acts 4, Acts 5, Acts 7. And they are saying the same thing. Now, look at Acts 10. To know exactly that what Peter was saying was from sense knowledge. You will see what happened now. Now, all the sermons till Acts 7, they were talking to Jews. Now, when he gets to the house of Cornelius, who is not a Jew, his sermon changes. What does he say? Acts 10. Our God, verse 38, anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. Now, look at verse 39. And we are witnesses of all things which he did both in the land of the Jews and in Jerusalem, watch this, whom they, see that? So he uses the word, they, slew and hanged on a tree. So in other words, he's giving an eyewitness account. What he saw. What Peter saw was that the Jews crucified Jesus. What he saw was that they were the ones who condemned him. What he saw, they were the ones who gave him to die. So when he got to the house of Galilee, just, funny enough, some of us, some of us um, we still say it today in a funny way, he said, we, um, say, you are not a Jew, maybe you are a Jebu man or a Jesha man. You say, we killed Jesus. But I don't lie against yourself. How old are you? Nonsense. When Peter got to the hand of Cornelius, he dared not say we did it. That's it. How? The day. <laughs> a man that had band of soldiers. <laughs> Don't go and do the family. <laughs> the day. The Jews. He's a Jew, but because he's a disciple. The day. Now, Acts 13. Paul comes to the scene. Praise God. We live like Paul. You don't like Paul? We are not yet a Christian yet. Come on, come on, come on. Acts 13. Someone asked me one day. He said, you like Paul too much? He said, because I'm a Christian. Hallelujah. Amen. Acts 13. Praise God. Are you there? Woo. Men and brethren, verse 26. Children of the stock of Abraham, whosoever among you fed God. To you is the word of this salvation saying. For they that dwell at Jerusalem and their rulers, because they knew him not. Watch that now. Paul does not condemn them. Because they knew him not, nor yet the voice of the prophets, which are read every Sabbath day, they had fulfilled them in condemning him. Watch this. And though they found no cause of death in him, yet desire they pilate, that he should be slain. And when they had fulfilled what? All that was written of him. What's the difference now? Paul is not speaking by sense knowledge. He's speaking from the scriptures. That all that Jesus did was to fulfill scripture. Pay attention to that. Pay attention now. Was to fulfill scripture. Now, those guys who were around just could not see beyond their noses. And they were going around. They look, did you see what they did to him? They were still, you know, some people they are still hurt. So when they saw they were coming for altar calls, they said, you wicked people. They so were sorry. Say sorry to God. <laughs> he took advantage of that. But watch this. Paul, who had no sense knowledge picture, all Paul relied upon was the scriptures. What does he have to say? Paul, one day, was reading the book of Isaiah. And a light flashed across his mind. 
And Paul saw that Isaiah didn't mention Pilate. He didn't mention Judas. He didn't mention the Jews. Isaiah 53, go there. Because the four Gospels are the things man saw. The epistles are the things God saw. Isaiah 53. So only those who were not present saw what happened. It was difficult for those who were present to see what happened. Because their senses hindered them. Isaiah wasn't present. Paul wasn't present. Isaiah 53. Are you there now? Verse 4. Let's take it together. Let's go. Surely he hath. Hold on. He hath. And what? Carried. Hell. He hath born. That means it was an act of his will. He hath borne our griefs, carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. Verse 5. He was wounded. Uh -huh. I know who wounded him. He was a soldier. His name is Sam Pam. He said, I damn that bad. Oh. He was wounded by who? That soldier. Watch this. He was bruised for our iniquity. I know who did that one. He's that kill and go guy. The guy that said, you know, cancel, cancel. You know, cancel, cancel. You know the joke. Cancel, cancel, cancel. cancel. <laughs> you know, I will, I will share this. is church, you know. <laughs> cancel, cancel. So, cancel, cancel. <laughs> bruised him for our iniquities. Chastisement of our peace. That's Kaboko now, right? Was laid upon him, or was upon him. How in the stripes we are healed. Now see the master stroke. This is where Paul got the truth from. Let's take verse 6 together. All we like sheep, oh everybody, come on. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone. The what? The what? The what? The what? No, no, no. The Jews condemned him. The? The what? Who condemned him? The Lord? Oh, uh, well, what he's trying to say is after they condemned him, he now did it. Watch. Watch this. Verse 9. He made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death because he had done no violence, neither was any deceit in his mouth. Verse 10. This is clear. Yet it please. Who bruised him? Did you see that in the four Gospels? You will see Pilate? Because that's what the eyes can see. Who bruised him? Who put him to grief? Who made his soul an offering for sin? See that? Sarah Corinthians 5.21 Paul now concluded and said, For he hath made him sin for us. Ain't no pilot involved. Ain't no Judas to blame. God did it. Who is responsible for the death of Jesus? Jehovah God. Who should we hold responsible for what happened to Jesus on the cross? God. So say, no, God how? Thomas said, never, how God? Even Jesus said, my God, my God, why have you abandoned me? Oh, it's true. God first of all abandoned him. Oh, Hey, bah, bah. It's because uh, God couldn't handle the soldier. <laughs> Matthew tax collector says, mm, God, I didn't see God there. Oh. I saw Pilate, the high priest, Judas, Peter, Yusuf. How? 
the cock told us. <laughs> that you denied him. <laughs> they were all sense knowledge men. It says the Lord bruised him. Watch this now. Jesus had already said it. He said, for God so loved the world that he gave. But he didn't understand what he was saying. That he gave his only begotten son. Now, he couldn't give his only begotten son in the incarnation because that was when he became the only begotten son. He gave his only begotten son when he gave him to die. In John 1, 29, John says something instructive. He says, Behold, the Lamb of God. That is, who brought the Lamb forward? Huh? Who killed the Lamb? Come on. In the Old Testament, who sacrifices the Lamb? The high priest. On behalf of God. So who did that to the Lamb? It says the Lamb of God. So you see, all this Easter drama is further blinding our eyes from the reality of what happened. You know I mean, everything. Watch this. Look at Romans 8.32. Don't blame Peter. If you were in his shoes, you would have said worse things. I will never forget, forgive Pilate for the rest of my life. Never. Ah, after everything that was said. Watch this. Romans 8.32. Look at this. He that... He that what? Spared not... His own son. But what? Delivered him up for us. So who delivered Jesus to die? Who did Peter say? Who did Peter tell us delivered him? Was Peter correct? Wait. He had half truth. But the Holy Spirit was supposed to show him all the truth. But he didn't wait. He had half truth. Because he says here, God delivered him up for us all. And Jesus had mentioned it. He said, look, you can't have power over me except it be given to you. He said that severally in different expressions. So here we are. Our eyes are opening in the epistles to see that God is responsible for the death of Jesus. He's responsible. He made him sin. He bruised him. Hallelujah. He made his soul an offering for sin. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Are you, are you still out there? Are you still out there? So the next time you want to act Jesus' film, and show you how the right actors there. God and his son. He blame no Pilate. Pilate needed his death to be saved. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. I said out there. Romans 5 8. For God commended his love towards us. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. For God commanded his love towards us. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Look at 1 Corinthians 2. How be it, verse 6, we speak wisdom among them that are perfect, yet not the wisdom of this world, nor the princes of this world that come to nothing. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the, now what's the word Mystery. The word mystery is a Greek word, musterion. It means a hidden fact. A veil is upon it. Okay? So what's the opposite of mystery? Huh? 
revelation. Praise God. All right? Are you, are you following this? The wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory. So this truth was kept for us, not from us. Now verse 8. Which none of the princes of this world knew, for had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. So they became actors because God engaged them. I'll say that again. They became actors because God engaged them. God used their ignorance. Praise God. To accomplish his own task. Now, hear me out. Hear me out. Hear me out. And I've said this many times. We're going to say it again. Satan is limited by the information that man has. Now, pay attention now. How do you receive information? By seeing, by hearing, and by imagination. Thought. Now, Satan picks his, his thoughts and his knowledge from man. If man doesn't talk, Satan doesn't know. So, because man was ignorant, Satan was ignorant. Because the Bible lets us know that God, through Jesus, Hebrews 2, 14, through death, destroyed him that had the power of death, even the devil. You would have talked. Satan, being the authority of darkness, at that point, arresting Jesus was in control. But if he had seen what the scripture had said about that earlier, he would have known he was losing control. But because man didn't know it, Satan couldn't know it. So, Satan is limited by what we know. No, not what we know. What man knows. <laughs> so, what do you mean by that? Remember? God had prophesied through the prophets for several years that Jesus was going to come and there was going to be an incarnation. He was born in a manger. Nobody saw it. For two years until the second year when the wise men came from the east seeing a star. And then came to one of his children called Herod. I said, a king has been born. Eh? Where? In this place? Yeah. It's okay. And the man becomes jittery. He says, go. When you see him, come back so that I come and visit him. And so, as they begin to go, how come Satan doesn't follow them? He doesn't go everywhere. He cannot be in more than one place at a time. And there they go. And they see Jesus, and they worshipped him. And don't forget, they gave him gifts, which I told you, God prepared those guys to bring the gifts to him, so that when they are going to escape, they can have enough money to spend in Egypt. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. So they were not decorations or Christmas cards. They were assets, treasures, right? So <laughs> they brought Christmas cards to Jesus. Bless you, Savior. He was two years old then. Okay? So, that night, God said, hey, Joe, Joe, stop touching her. Stand up. He was saying, that one, a virgin child. Let's have our own. Say, la, ah. This is church. Well, that's what happened. He said, Joseph, say, yes, Lord. Don't close your eyes yet. Open it. Now you're going to take that child. You're going to take the mother. You're going to go to Egypt. He said, we have not one visa lottery. You have to go now. He said, because they are after his life. And then they go to Egypt. The wise men were told, don't go back to Aaron. So whatever is not said to Satan, he doesn't know it. Satan needs Herod to know. And then they go, Herod now, where are the wise men? They send text message, it's, the number is out of the uh, coverage area. They sent emails, it was bouncing back. They checked their Facebook pages, they were closed. How can we get information? Check that DP upset. There was no, hey, short things, you know. <laughs> Everything blank. So he began to say, now Satan, I told you, Satan is so impatient, he moves too fast. He's stupid. So he moves fast. He says, okay, kill all the children. Two years under. 
go to one child. That's Satan. So they killed all the children, but where was Jesus in Egypt? Wasn't Satan in Egypt? I've told you, he is not omnipresent. He was never in Egypt. He didn't even know they were there. And Egypt must have been full of unbelievers. But Satan is as daft as those unbelievers. So here they go. Jesus is 12. He's in the temple. He's not playing, um, he's not playing Ben 10. At 12 years old. He's not, you know, he's just studying the scriptures and asking questions. And Satan still wasn't aware that was the man. He's so daft. Why? Because he doesn't know beyond man. The man didn't know, so Satan couldn't know. Anything you don't tell him, he doesn't know. So every time you tell him, I have made you too small in my eyes, he knows. <laughs> you didn't get that, did you? He knows. You say, hey, you have. <laughs> Hallelujah. Okay. So Jesus is now 30. And then for the first time, since the wise men, the prophet John says, this is the Christ. Then Satan knows. Immediately after, he comes after him to tempt him. Every, every silence amongst men is a silence in knowledge for Satan. So what you don't tell him, he doesn't. Remember? When Samuel was going to anoint David, and he says to God, look, Saul is still the king. If I, if I go to anoint David in the house of Jesse, uh, he's going to kill me. God says, all right. Say you're going there to worship. He doesn't know what worship is. Worship includes anointing the king. I know. <laughs> Where are you going? I'm going to worship. Uh, let him go. Let him go. <laughs> he goes there, he anoints the king. <laughs> See that? So information paralyzes the devil. That's why speaking in tongues puts him more crazy. Because now we are talking with Papa God. These are times of mighty manifestations. These are seasons of glorious manifestations. These are times. For more information about the Saints Community, visit www.thesaintscommunity.com.